Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm testing out some tinnitus relief eardrops to see just how effective they are at reducing this unrelenting ringing in my right ear. Coming up. If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you already know that I have some pretty nasty tinnitus in my right ear. This tinnitus started when I was around 18 years old, and the audiologist when I went into the Marine Corps is actually the person who told me that the ringing in my right ear is not normal. But essentially, I've been aware of this tinnitus now for nearly 20 years. While I never really understood tinnitus until I became an audiologist, I've been very aware of this ringing sound inside of my right ear 24-7. Technically, there are two different types of tinnitus. You have objective tinnitus that can actually be heard by somebody else as well, and then you have subjective tinnitus, which is much more common, but this is the type of tinnitus that can only be heard by you. And this is the type of tinnitus that I have. It can only be heard by me, and it is a very high-pitched ring that we believe is due to the hearing loss that I also have in my right ear. You see, the theory behind tinnitus is that if you have lack of auditory information making it from your ear up to your brain, your brain wants to replace that missing auditory information with a phantom sound, and in my case, it sounds like a high pitch ring. Fortunately, with the help of therapy, I would consider myself to be someone who does a very good job at coping with this extremely loud ringing inside of my ear. The problem is, while I am really good at not allowing this perception of tinnitus to negatively impact my life, it does not change the fact that I have to deal with this ringing sound every single day. Now, researchers are really hard at work trying to find a cure for tinnitus because the first person who comes up with the silver bullet to treat all forms of tinnitus successfully is going to become a very rich person or organization. However, so far they have not found that one thing that works well for everybody, which means that everybody has to find the one thing that typically works best for them. For instance, individuals with hearing loss who treat their hearing loss with hearing aids, 60% of those individuals typically experience a significant reduction in the perception of their tinnitus while they're wearing their devices. Then you have a variety of other therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is abbreviated CBT. You have tinnitus retraining therapy, which is abbreviated TRT. And then you have tinnitus masking, which is my personal favorite because that's what works for my right ear the best. However, in my never ending search to reduce the perception and loudness of tinnitus, I stumbled across these homeopathic all natural eardrops on Amazon that I will link in the description below, but these eardrops are intended to relieve the symptoms of tinnitus, including ringing, buzzing, roaring, chirping, pounding, and discomfort. So I went ahead and decided to turn myself into a guinea pig to see how well these eardrops actually worked. But before I get into my evaluation of these eardrops, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel because it gets these videos in front of a broader audience, and it encourages me to make more videos just like this one. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit the subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my new videos. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and check out these eardrops. Now a little disclaimer here. If you do have tinnitus, and especially tinnitus in one ear only, I highly recommend that you go and get your hearing tested by an audiologist because having tinnitus in one ear can be a sign of a serious medical condition. Fortunately, after an MRI, it was determined that I do not have a tumor growing on the auditory nerve of my right ear and that my tinnitus is likely due to the unilateral hearing loss that I have in my right ear. Since I do teach at the University of Illinois, I do have the ability to use their extensive library. And when I spent a few hours looking for research behind tinnitus relief eardrops, I could not find a single peer reviewed study. Now there are some sparse studies out there that look at some of the active ingredients inside of some of these different products that you typically take to ingest, one of them being ginkgo biloba that has shown to be somewhat effective for the reduction in perception of tinnitus, but at the end of the day, there is no actual peer-reviewed research on any of these individual products. Now this is likely due to the fact that none of these homeopathic products have to be reviewed by the FDA. 
This means that the over-the-counter tinnitus remedy category is virtually unregulated, so there is no incentive for them to actually have to provide any research to prove that their product works or to prove that it's safe. Essentially, these companies can sell and promote their products any way that they see fit. And when I actually look at some of the things that they say on this particular product, it says that according to homeopathic indications, these ingredients provide temporary relief from symptoms such as ringing, buzzing, roaring, nerve and noise sensitivity, pounding, discomfort, and wax buildup. Now I will go ahead and put up the active ingredients on the screen here because I don't want to actually butcher them by reading them off to you. And it is possible that I could have some kind of adverse reaction from some of these active ingredients, but I think that the risk is relatively low for an eardrop. And when I'm assessing risk for myself, I think that the likelihood of me having an adverse reaction in my right ear is probably worth the potential that I would get some relief of the tinnitus. I went ahead and did this for 60 straight days. That is right, six zero days in a row, morning and evening. In fact, I did it so often that I had to order more of these eardrops because I was running out and didn't think I could make it to 60 days. And that was with me doing it in only one ear because I do not have tinnitus in my left ear. And you wanna know the results? The results were basically that I had no change in my perceptual tinnitus. I did notice that my tinnitus would actually get louder after I put the eardrops inside of my ear, but that's typically due to the fact that when you put something inside of your ear, like you plug up your ear with a finger or an ear plug or putting drops inside of your ear, it reduces the amount of auditory information that can make it up to your brain, and typically your perception of tinnitus will increase if that's occurring. But otherwise, these eardrops had no discernible impact on my perception of loudness of my tinnitus or perception of annoyance of my tinnitus. And I've been experiencing this tinnitus at basically the same level for the last 20 years, so I am very accustomed to how this tinnitus sounds all the time. Of course, you have to be very careful not to generalize my experience with these eardrops with anyone else in the general population. So just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean that it wouldn't work for you or that it wouldn't work for someone else. But this is why having peer-reviewed studies is is so important because ultimately we don't know if this product would actually work unless it has a peer-reviewed study done on it. So as I take a step back and actually start to think about why maybe these drops didn't work for me, I started to think about this idea that, okay, so these active ingredients that are inside of this product, when you put them inside of your ear canal, they basically just go and sit up against your eardrum. And unless those active ingredients absorb to some degree in either the eardrum or the skin around the ear canal, now, they're not really going anywhere that would help with perceptual tinnitus. When you think about it, the inner ear is what is basically connected to the brain from a neurological standpoint. You have the auditory nerve that goes up to the brain and you can provide stimulation or some kind of impact through that route. When you start to think about how some individuals have so much success with different tinnitus treatments like hearing aids or tinnitus masking, it's because these methods have a direct impact on their brain, as well as different types of therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, which has a direct impact on how the human brain functions. Nevertheless, while I was unable able to identify any evidence that would suggest that these over-the-counter eardrops actually reduce the perception of tinnitus, I was also not able to identify any evidence to show that they were actually dangerous. While I did not experience any negative side effects from using these particular drops, it is totally up to you whether or not you find the risk to be worth the potential reward of reducing your perception of tinnitus. But based on my review of the literature and based on the lack of success that I had with these particular eardrops, I would not be able to ethically endorse any type of eardrop at this time. Just know that there are tinnitus therapies that are backed by peer-reviewed research that have been proven to reduce the perception and annoyance of tinnitus. You just have to take the time to do the research of these particular treatments yourself or just simply contact an audiologist who specializes in tinnitus treatment. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.